I think by now, for now, we can mute ourselves and then we'll hand it over to you. Good evening and a warm welcome to the SES webinar on Landmark Office Complex, GSW Headquarters, BKC Mumbai. May I now introduce you to the speakers and the moderator for today. First up, the moderator, Mr. Abhijit Shah, Managing Director, Walter P. Moore. Abhijit Shah is the country MD for Walter P. Moore India. He is principal with Walter P. Moore with over 21 years of diversified structural engineering design and project delivery experience. Abhijit spent the first 13 years of his career in Dallas office, where he got opportunity to work with many stadium projects before moving to Pune to start and establish Walter P. Moore India. His leadership to the Indian team has designed and delivered multiple types of projects in India, like aviation, residential, commercial, entertainment, traffic, water resources, and sports, including the roof design of the Motera Cricket Stadium in Ahmedabad. Now our speakers, Mr. Nikul Shah, Associate Director, Architect, INI Design Studio. Nikhil is a creative and accomplished architect with an award-winning and diverse portfolio of over six years and clients spanning three continents. <laughs> His exposure in practice in the US and at INI India has given him a broad perspective of different cultures and their attitude towards design. Nikhil's experience includes interior design and space planning of various types. Nicole approaches each design with a view to understand the project's role and its potential effect to the surrounding built environment. He truly believes that each design should create added value for the client as well as the community and the end user. Next up, Mr. Nayan Trivedi, partner Lera. Nayan holds a Master Engineering Structural for Gujarat University in India and a Bachelor of Engineering Civil from North Gujarat University. He joined Lera in 2000 and advanced to senior associate in 2006 and became partner in 2010. Nayan has been integrally involved in the firm's client relations in South Asia, as well as opening the firm's Mumbai office. His experience includes super tall towers, mixed use complexes, cultural project projects, educational facilities and transport projects. Nayan frequently lectures at industry conferences and events and several Severed as chairperson of the structures in 2015 Vertical Cities Conferences. He was also part of the New York City Building Codes Structural Loads Committee. Up next, Mr. Ashish Bangle, Director, Do Dr. Kelkar Design Private Limited. With a BE Civil from Mumbai University, Ashish has over 23 years of experience in the structural planning and design of various structures, including several high rise residential and commercial buildings and industrial buildings in India and abroad. His tank's task involves supervising the work of various engineers, draftsmen, including computer an analysis, meeting with clients, architects, and other consultants for coordination and visiting the sites of, for periodic supervision. Requesting all the attendees to please participate in the poll and do write the name of the speaker whom you would like to address during the Q&A session. Also, do subscribe to our YouTube channel, SES TV, where we are live now, and you can get access to all the webinars and steel construction updates on this day. Over to you, Mr. Abhijit Shah. All right. Thank, thank you for that introduction, and uh, welcome all uh, to this uh, webinar series organized. So, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, the Steel Construction Summit for these webinar series. Uh, it has been uh, it has been an amazing run for this is like the 12th or 13th one in the series and we've talked to senior architects uh, engineers uh, we've talked to some budding architects and uh, all these experiences have been really really great so uh, two weeks ago i kind of uh, talked about some uh, retractable sports stadiums then last week uh, there was an industrial structure that was discussed on kone cranes and so today we are going to be talking about a commercial structure and we have a great uh, set of speakers and panelists to talk about it. Uh, and uh, the beauty of the webinar is, I mean, we are from all over the world, right? I mean, 
So uh, Ashish is joining from Mumbai. Uh, Nikul is from Ahmedabad. Uh, I'm from Pune. Uh, the seminar is being hosted from Mumbai and uh, Nayan is uh, calling in from New York. So uh, welcome all. So what uh, the format of today's webinar is gonna be that uh, we'll have uh, Nikul present the architectural part of the project and then uh, Nayan will tell us a little bit about the structural aspects. And after that, uh, we'll do a moderator moderated uh, question and answer session uh, in which Ashish and I will join again. So with that, uh, uh, let's have a go uh, great uh, one and a half hour of uh, webinar. Uh, over to you, Nico. Thanks, Abhijit. Uh, thanks, SSC, for uh, giving me an opportunity to present this interesting and challenging project of ours to all of you. Uh, so I'm just gonna share, start sharing my screen. We can jump to the presentation straight. All right, so this is one of the most interesting and challenging project uh, that we have done so far in our careers. JSW, everybody knows this client, they have uh, been in uh, the profession or uh, the steel industry for a long time. And they have been uh, one of the top few industrialists in India. When this client came to us in 2006, they wanted to build their headquarter building in Mumbai. And uh, they were thinking of uh, getting a land somewhere in BKC. And they talked about their vision for the project and uh, how they wanted their project to be a state of the art, innovative project that uh, represents their ethos, their values, and also puts the company or the branding of JSW uh, to the market. So when we met the client, we discussed certain aspects of the project and uh, we derived certain core values that we learned from the client. Uh, some of the things that we noted from initial meetings were what client were looking for. Uh, one of them was transparency in their uh, values and ethos. Uh, they wanted a project which has uh, you know, excellence, which they can demonstrate through their uh, brand. Uh, they wanted a project which looks dynamic. Uh, they wanted to represent the image as uh, uh, passionate, passionate for learning new things and adapting to new challenges in the world. And they wanted to stick to sustainability that they always believed in. So next stage was, we sat with the client, had uh, multiple uh, discussions and uh, derived project brief and vision for the project. So as I said, uh, the company's values, ethos and vision were discussed we discussed what kind of spaces client is looking for. So uh, we derived certain aspects of the project based on the discussions with them. They wanted spaces which uh, uh, elevate mind of employees with renewed conviction, boost employee morales, incite new young thinking, and uh, set the stage for a stronger outlook. They wanted uh, spaces which creates, you know, a lot of uh, breakout social uh, kind of breakout spaces within the building. They wanted uh, uh, the employees to be able to use every niche and corner of the building to generate new ideas. So, and they also wanted to uh, support the sustainability and uh, they wanted to provide great indoor environment quality. So then we came up with a vision, which uh, we shared with the client that uh, this is something that we have come up with based on the discussion with you. And we all have to commit as a team to take this vision further until we finalize the design, until we complete the project. And uh, you start uh, basically taking over and start operations on the building. So we came up with this vision that you all see here, uh, basically committed for a vision to make this project as an exemplary project in the area of environmental design, energy optimization, safety, setting a benchmark at an international level. So next stage was uh, the site and uh, how, uh, you know, the shape of the site, the location, as you know, this is located in BKC, one of the most uh, prominent location in Mumbai sought after 
uh, the costliest real estate in the area. And uh, the most challenging part of this project was the shape of the site. It was an I-shaped uh, site which had uh, two entry points, one from Kalina side and one from BKC side, which were as narrow as just an entry from both sides. And the shape of site was also kind of uh, very challenging to put a building within. So when we looked at the site, those were initial first few challenges that we thought of. There were some uh, positives about the site that the MMRDA grounds was completely open and the building's uh, aesthetics was visible from BKC throughout the whole span of the road. So we noted some of the aspects and characteristics of the project challenges and how we can take these challenges and turn them into opportunities. So turning the site limitations uh, into opportunities, that was what uh, our takeaway from the site visits and the analysis. And uh, we started with a lot of client interactions. Uh, we usually do a lot of these uh, design charades with the client where client becomes part of the design process. And our design team, our uh, engineering team, our uh, structure engineering team, all become part of the initial idea sessions so that we can test and generate ideas and share with the client in real time. And we can progress in next stages with a very short duration to come up with a finalized concept. So multiple consultations with the client, uh, we had uh, almost uh, three, four day sessions uh, four of the times uh, we would uh, set up uh, a 30 people conference room in few of the hotels or in some 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 cases we set it up in clients office uh, our team from uh, different uh, parts of the world joined in depending on the uh, stages of the project and we all came to uh, certain uh, design drivers out of this exercise we all discussed and came to these uh, five elements that the project has to have. It has to be iconic. It, the project has to be very inviting. Uh, the aesthetics should be very inspiring. It has to have building intelligence in it, and it has to be innovative to represent the uh, JSW brand. So we again went back to uh, what client does uh, is uh, they are in steel, they are into steel and manufacturing steel. And we thought that maybe that's where the uh, inspiration is. And we looked at that, looked at more, and said, let's come up with an idea that actually ties back to steel, uh, the characteristics of steel, and uh, also something that we can take away and turn that into a uh, design for the building. So taking from uh, site shapes, context, uh, the characteristics of the material, and the client's uh, design drivers, uh, based on the charades that we had, we came up with three distinctive ideas out of those workshops. So this is one of the first concept that we came up with. Uh, on the right top, you can see the shape of the site, which is I-shaped uh, and uh, the, literally the shape was derived from the shape, uh, shape of the site and leaving the margins. And uh, the idea here was that uh, you have uh, literally I-shaped building and you have an atrium right in the center. The uh, width of the bars are kept in a manner so that uh, you get maximum 16 meter on each side so that the natural light comes in from all sides. So a lot of uh, sustainability and natural lighting and everything thought of while actually uh, deriving the concept. Uh, there was one more concept that we also came up with during this design charit. And that was about, uh, you know, one side building with one core on one side. Uh, it was more of a crescent kind of a scheme. And then we came up with a third one where uh, you have more rectilinear shaped uh, building and uh, you have core and kind of an atrium in the center, but you have two skipping bars uh, looking towards each other because we were we were trying to respond to two side entry to the site and we did not want any of the entries to look secondary to the other because both of the uh, sites or the locations are prominent and uh, kalina entry was equally prominent as well as the mmrda 
So we wanted the building to respond to both side entry and the visitors to not feel that this is a secondary entry. So after assessing these three designs with the design drivers that we had come up with together with client, uh, we all agreed that maybe the first design that we submitted or the presentation that we did for first design is the one that client likes the most. And we all felt that that probably uh, represents the design drivers the most. So this is the design we went ahead with. This was the initial concept that a mass model and a concept that we submitted to the client. And uh, uh, after going to the next stage, we thought of what kind of design innovations that we want within this. So definitely uh, we threw that question back to client that uh, what do you think this design should be after looking at the massing and uh, use of steel and client was very clear that they are into steel and they would like to go with steel structure as an expression of design. And uh, as everyone knows uh, in India about uh, seven, eight years ago, doing steel structure is one of the most challenging thing. Uh, availability of uh, structural steel was one of the most uh, challenging aspect. And, uh, but client was very clear that uh, we as a steel company, we would like to do our building in steel. And we took up the challenge along with our team, uh, structural engineers and engineers. And we said, we have to do it and we have to do it the best way we can. So st using the steel as a structure and as an expression of design, then we also wanted to do the most sustainable building available. Uh, so we went with uh, innovative uh, glazing for the building. We went with the best possible uh, glass available in the market with uh, the best technology available at that time in the Western countries. And we also went ahead with the uh, intelligent building management systems that could be added to the overall building operations and ultimately adding to sustainability and efficiencies. So this was the uh, visuals that were presented to the client after the concept was finalized. And uh, each aspect represents the uh, drivers that we had narrowed down in the initial charrettes. So these are some of the, uh, so if I just go back to the main image, these were the uh, visuals that were presented renders. And these are the actual, this is the actual photo of the building executed. So you can see kind of uh, the structure that we went with and uh, the kind of uh, building expressions. The idea was to accentuate the use of steel and the ability and capability of steel to be demonstrated through this design and which is why you can see a lot of uh, overhangs and cantilever and uh, the expression of steel vi visible through the glass in the design. So this is the entry drop off where you have almost a 14 meter cantilever uh, without any support. And uh, that kind of gives you weather shading at the same time uh, grandeur at the entry. Uh, the atrium itself uh, was uh, designed keeping a lot of uh, innovations in mind. Uh, the shape and size of the atrium was studied in depth to see amount of light coming in. Uh, latest technologies were used in the glazing of the atrium as well as uh, other areas to make sure the uh, indoor environment is uh, absolutely uh, perfect for the employees. and lighting level as much as uh, we can bring natural light to these spaces that was the intent of uh, uh, the design process that we were going through and uh, minimum use of artificial light so the depth of the bars were kept in a manner where you can borrow lights from both sides one from atrium side as well as from the outer facades uh, so I'll just quickly go through some of the floor plans just to see how they shape out. Uh, there were two basements that were planned with uh, uh, multiple cars uh, underneath, uh, about uh, 300 plus cars. Uh, we also had planned at that time for uh, battery operated vehicles as well, considering sustainability in mind. Uh, this is the uh, ground level, uh, rather uh, 
site plan where you can see the shape of the building and the atrium and the depth of the bar that allows a, natural, a maximum natural light coming in from all sides and uh, entry on both sides, which are uh, very symmetrical and allows the experience from both sides to be very similar and grandeur at the same time. So these are typical floors. Uh, we can see how uh, the central space is uh, uh, kept in mind in a manner where uh, the larger number of employees are actually uh, taking advantage of that. And the corners are used for uh, meeting rooms and managers' cabins. So upper two floors, eighth and ninth floor, they were designed for executives. And those two had interconnectivity within them. And they also had a setback kind of a thing where we had uh, multiple terraces which uh, kind of looks over towards the MMRDA side, the ground side. This is the last floor where uh, the executive sit. So on corners, we had offices with larger terraces. We had a boardroom. Uh, we had uh, multiple meeting rooms and waiting areas for the executives to conduct their uh, meetings. We also had a small residential uh, setting over there with a small kitchen to support that. And uh, you must have seen uh, the stair arrangement. This is probably one of a kind arrangement. We do do that a lot in Western culture, but uh, scissor stairs are uh, unique to our culture. In India, we don't do too much of scissor stairs here. What we have been able to achieve by placing uh, four scissor stairs, so two sets, uh, by placing it in a manner, we have been able to provide the Ex exits from each corners, as well as increase the ability to egress more people by multiplying them and take up less space within the plan. So this is a typical section here. This, this particular drawing talks a lot about the strategy that uh, we went towards and each of the uh, sustainability features that the building includes. Most prominent one is uh, you can see the building glass kind of leans out. The whole idea was to basically uh, cut down on the solar heat gain. The other feature within the facade, which is the most prominent one, is uh, double skin facade. So there is an outer performance glazing. There is a cavity of approximately one meter in between with a catwalk for maintenance. And then you have an inner glazing, which is a clear glass that allows you to basically let the skin or the facade breathe. So air could be uh, brought in from below and the hot air rises and they evaporate from the top. So it kind of keeps your facade cooler than the outer temperature. And these were the some of the features that we had used. The atrium had a atrium exhaust system. So every time when the atrium temperature rises, the exhaust opens up and throws the hot air out. So it keeps the atrium and the office spaces cooler and also brings the heating and cooling load down. There were terraces uh, that were uh, keeping the spaces below cooler. Uh, the atriums were, as I said, were designed to be able to visually connect uh, between the office spaces on each side. So there is always a visual connection, even though uh, the staff is sitting on two sides of it. Uh, the upper floors, which were uh, specifically designed for executives, uh, some of the meetings room were planned in a manner. So the, the idea was that uh, those office floors should uh, feel like they are in and out spaces. You have terraces and gardens that you can look towards because uh, this building is located in area where there are too many uh, concrete buildings around and you want to be able to see some green to soften the whole aspect of, you know, in and out spaces. So we designed all the spaces on executive floors in a manner where you get uh, some breathing of green before you actually look at the uh, buildings around it. And so these are the facade components of the building. We looked at uh, different elements within the facade where some areas which were uh, of a uh, rain screen system of stone wall. Uh, the vision glass was uh, three layer uh, 
DGU glass, uh, probably the best in available at that time when we specified. Uh, the floors uh, which were cantilevered uh, studied differently. The vision glass, the spandrel glass and parasol. So we studied every aspect of the facade and their uh, uh, role in the facade design as well as energy efficiency separately. So while designing the atrium, we also looked at a lot of these uh, light and shadow studies to define what is the actual, what is the right size of atrium that we need that gives optimum amount of natural light, but also uh, does not bring too much of heat. And these were the studies that we did to define and uh, finalize the shape and size of the atrium. Uh, talking about the dual layer skin or the facade. So this one thing the steel structure allowed us to do was uh, have larger overhangs and cantilevers. And uh, also the aesthetics of the steel to be able to make it part of the architecture and interior spaces. And uh, the double layer skin, you can see how we have allowed the uh, fresh air to come in from below. And then as the temperature rises, it allows the hot air to be evaporated from the top of the facade. And as required, you can allow the fresh air to come in by operating the windows that are at the second, la second layer. So we also did a lot of uh, studies while uh, going into detailed design of the project. So we looked at the uh, shading coefficient of the glass. We did the performance test based on the site location. A uh, lot of different studies before we finalize on the glazing properties or amount of solid versus glass, amount of spandrel versus transparency. Then a uh, lot of uh, other engineering uh, sustainability features such as uh, uh, wastewater management uh, integrated with IBMS rainwater storage and harvesting was uh, put in place. And then uh, we, were, we were intending to recycle every drop of water that is uh, used in the building to be used one or another way, either through flushing or gardening or uh, any other way within the building. A lot of uh, automation uh, was done to make sure that we have complete control over the energy usage as well as the reusage of those uh, resources into the building. So we had also studied the month-wise cooling load requirement and uh, throughout the year, uh, considering the Mumbai context in mind, humidity, uh, air temperature, everything. So these are some of the sustainability features uh, that uh, that is integrated in the project. And uh, Basically, some of them were achieved uh, much better than we anticipated earlier. So during the design process, we kept pushing for more and more uh, towards sustainability. And we realized that we could actually achieve that by the support of our engineers as well as uh, client. So these are some of the features that uh, uh, we have used a hybrid air conditioning system uh, comprising of static chilled water thermal storage along with magnetic levitating chillers. Then uh, the HVAC load was reduced approximately 20% by some of these uh, sustainability aspects of the project. Uh, dry coolers were used to reduce water requirements. Most of the areas, as uh, I said earlier, uh, were naturally lit, which uh, literally uh, eliminated the use of uh, artificial light during the daytime only during cloudy uh, cloudy hours or in the evenings where they had to turn the lights on. So even today, when we go there during the daytime, there's literally no requirement of turning the lights on because of the quality of light that gets into the building. All of these are uh, integrated with IBMS systems. All the blinds are integrated with IBMS systems. So there is a real time tracking of the lighting amount available in the environment and the blinds are operated according to the lighting available in the environment. So IBMS, as I said, IBMS system was used extensively to control all aspects of the building uh, to the advantage of sustainability. 
uh, lighting design, all lightings were uh, put on IBMS, including the uh, specialty lightings and uh, task lighting uh, could be operated straight from the either uh, phones or uh, IP based phones uh, on the desks. Uh, there were sensors put in uh, in each of the areas where there was possibility that there may not be any occupancies during the day. So all meeting rooms were on uh, occupancy sensors and to make sure that there is no uh, wastage of energy throughout this throughout the building. Uh, reuse of rainwater, flushing, gardening, we already talked about that. 100% sewage treatment and recycling, reuse of treated water was uh, planned in the building. Uh, the building was designed for the best possible uh, rating at that time. This was USGBC lead platinum. Now, I put together some images uh, of uh, construction photos versus uh, com nearing completion photos just to understand how a structure can be transformed into something uh, so powerful by use of steel or uh, material similar to steel. So you can see on the left uh, when the structure was completed, steel structure, and after the glazing was done. Then the atrium here, you can see uh, the steel structure with metal decking is visible and how it could be transformed into a space that you see on the right. Now, one you see on the left, those columns are actually steel columns. They're just cladded with fire safe material. So complete structure is actually made of steel above ground. Uh, these are some of the images of the project. You can see that steel has allowed the building to reflect that transparency. You can see loss, less of uh, being able to see in and out and has allowed a lot of uh, larger overhangs and spans that will be usually difficult to achieve with concrete structure. These are some of the images of interiors for the executive floors. So as I said earlier, interior is also designed keeping uh, minimalism in mind and opening up more towards uh, outside and in spaces. Uh, the client is uh, one of the uh, largest, uh, has largest art collection in the country. And uh, their brief for interior was very clear that they wanted something that appreciates the artwork. So we uh, configured the art selection as well as the spaces in a manner more like museum so that they remain as a background rather than try to fight with the spaces. So every uh, space is designed keeping minimalism in mind. So that's pretty much the end of uh, architectural component. I think I'll hand this over to Nayan Bai and structure engineers team to take this further. Thank you. Yep. I'll stop sharing. Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, so thank you, Nicole. Why? Uh, great presentation, architecture point of view. Now things start with structure. So, uh, first question uh, before uh, I think we start the project, uh, when the uh, Nikunj Bain's team came to us, uh, they asked that we want to do structural steel building in India. And this is, I think, I recall kind of closer to September, October, near Diwali time in 2007. Uh, so, so in my first question, thank you very much, because 2007, uh, the steel in India was very challenging because steel is the one which required industry. You cannot do steel building without industry. You can do it, but it's more ch challenging and innate to do that. So first I said, thank you very much. But then Mr. Jindal told me one thing and I said, yes, to the project. He said, man, if I cannot do structural steel building, then who will do it? 
So the whole start of the project, I say immediately say, yes, we are in. So the whole start of structural steel um, is, is client, the, the, we like the client, and it's clear in his mind, no concrete, steel building. We want dental system, everything in steel. So that's the beauty of this project that everyone knows day one what they want. So therefore, this project is started as a steel building because people always ask me, why you did GSW project in steel? And I said that the name only says that, GSW, in that steel. So that's the logic of using the steel here. Which, uh, kind of thing. And, and before I go in detail about structure, I like to uh, thanks because I, we always believe as a team that any successful project is a teamwork. It's not like radar design, this design, this design. It's a purely teamwork. So of course, architect has a good vision, client has a very good vision. So, so INS Design Studio has done a great job on that. Um, so we have a great partner structurally. We have a, a Dr. Kelkar of uh, his office helping us out. So we work as a team and we produce this. The design you see is basically not Lera design. Is, is design of Dr. Kelkra office and Lera. They are really supported us uh, because as mentioned to you, there was a lot of challenges for structure still because this is kind of one of the best building that time. So, so Dr. Kelkra office helped us a lot. You know, what is available material, how we should do. We have a lot of kind of conference call, WebEx and all things. So thanks to Dr. Kelkra, I think um, we have a, a, a Dr. Kelkra office representative also. Uh, he worked on the project too. Then of course, developer is Orbit, steel manufacturers great, fabricated. So this, I will say this is, I will say thanks to everyone. Of course, great MEP people also. So this is a great teamwork, successful project. I will say there is nothing called Lera design, all things. It is basically great teamwork and still specifically require a lot of teamwork because the MEP opening and all coordination is very, very crucial. So. So we think that this is a successful project because of great teamwork and a lot of challenges. Uh, as I think Nikul Bhai already said that the project is around two basement, uh, ground floor, atrium floor, and eight uh, upper floor. And area is around 620,000 square foot area. Uh, now material, we use, to be honest with you, we use pretty good material that time. So we still use the 345. Only thing we did a lot of structural material use is UB section because Jindal want clear in mind they want to use their their material as much as we can. There's a limit, of course, but so we use majority portions of work is they produce the shape. Some locations the UB section is not enough, so we welded the plate, like column location, some beam location. We make it work, as well as we did uh, metal deck. And so basically, the construction structure steel uh, deck and concrete in the deck, and that's a design. Uh, for, of course, analysis and other things, as you know, we did ETAB analysis. Uh, we have an in, uh, uh, in-house software to design the steel member and other thing. So we started with the project with, we provide five layout, five option of layout to, do, uh, to consider for the, what do you call um, this design. So, so we have started, for example, a column, we started kind of column, uh, interior column, and different different layout kind of thing. And we propose one of the options because the beauty of steel is a long span. So we, we propose one of the options that, hey, let's delete the column in the middle and make the span longer. So because the span, as, as Nikol mentioned, that the building is kind of sloping. If you see that, the building is sloping from our outer face. So our bottom spawn is in the range of 11.5 meter uh, and top spawn was 14.5 meter, give and take number. And other direction is nine meters, which is beautiful for still building that you would like to have a rectangular panel that just gives you economical design. So we try to avoid the column in the middle and end of the day, uh, the plan consider is this one where we have a no column interior space, which is very important architecturally, gives a very nice space. They can do whatever they want. And and um, and uh, you have a call uh, beam or uh, girder in on perimeter or or atrium side, and uh, which is shorter span and longer span is filler beam we call. So very well worked out with the team. Again, we spend a lot of time together, uh, pros and cons for various options, and this is a plan was concluded. Uh, second thing, the always any building we require lateral system. So here is clear. Again, we have to use steel. 
So our game plan, let me go back slide. So we use a lateral system point, we use a brace system. And brace system has some challenges here. So let me go back here. So if you see the brace elevations, we put a bracing on, on perimeter. Uh, but also we put a bracing uh, at the, uh, as shown in this sketch, so we put on perimeter, of course, that's because that's easy to do, but, but, but we also put near to the elevator because we require little system kind of thing. And we keep the perimeter as much as we can open. Uh, we've also provided some bracing in the, in the middle, uh, specifically, there's a reason for that, because this building, if you see the building, the building is basically two kind of building if you think two wing, you can say. And then this wing has a big hole in the middle. So we always call this bracing, middle bracing, we always call stitching. I usually use what's called stitching bracing. It's stitching the two, two, uh, two diaphragm by using bracing and of course used for lateral system too. But I usually call it is a stitching bracing, which is very, very, very important for the building behavior. So this is a kind of bracing. Another challenge in this bracing was um, that as, as, as you re re realize that the, the, the perimeter is sloping. So, so perimeter is a sloping. We prefer to have a bracing, not a sloping. So, so easy for construction, load point, number of benefit point of it. So we put each floor of bracing is straight. And then the next bracing start again straight here. So all our bracing are straight. Of course, it looks kind of inclined, but it started this one. So always our work point, we are dragging the force from the above to the back here and bring it down. Again, we, we are transferring the load back to the next beam and dragging down. So there was some challenge on, on designing analysis and detailing for this bracing because this bracing is not inclined. Bracing is floor to floor is a straight. And of course, after that, we provide some forces and we design and all braces are tube structure. And as mentioned to you, we have to use the stitching bracing, which is structure is very, very benefit because this makes significant uh, difference in behavior. And we have to make sure this building act as a one building, not two building. So the, this, this bracing uh, is very important. And, and the interior bracing, the stitching bracing is very, very uh, crucial because is exposed for architect. So we spend time and energy to, uh, to detail this area. And, and funny thing happened, one upon time I was going for presentation uh, for this workshop and I went to JFK Airport and I saw detail, which I designed already. Uh, and I said, oh, this is a good one. Let me take a photo. So I took a photo, this is JFK Airport, took a photo. Uh, we, we also work on that project also. And we put together and show the client, I can say, hey, this is we, our vision is, this detail is very crucial architecturally and we want to edge you by pin connection. So this is the detail we prepare. And, and you can see the final product is, is actually exposed tubes and it come out very well. Uh, now, another, another number of challenge, but one challenge was that this is a big cantilever, 14 meter cantilever uh, for the project. So we pro propose, I think three options. Uh, the option one, which plate girder, which is partially up, partial down, because uh, that gives architect uh, no bracing, no vision, it's pure cantilever, plate girder. Second option, we, we propose that uh, we can do, instead of doing the uh, aggressive bracing, we just do the one bracing. So we propose the other options to be that one. And uh, of course, architect lies like the more better, which is the plate girder. The plate girder was considered uh, in the design. And, and, and after designing the plate girder, um, the, the, during this, uh, uh, because the GFC stage or CD, uh, CA phase, client or contractor realized that building this because those days we don't have a kind of uh, big crane, all, all of this number of things was, was as mentioned, industry was not there. So it was heavy plate girder. So we are back to again, remove the plate girder and back to the truss system because usually truss is lighter material than plate girder. So there were a lot of challenge for construction. We changed the design back to the, the what you call truss. And so, so as mentioned to you, there's a number of challenge was there. Um, as, uh, as mentioned that time, industry was not, not um, developed as today, you can say that. So, so we have very, very limited, uh, uh, steel ship was, was uh, 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 limited ship. So we have to use that or make a plate at the plate and everything. Uh, 
second thing is uh, so therefore we use major portion is uh, ub section uh, wherever we can have a choice we made a uh, welded plate like for example column and beam we are welded plate uh, we got some few sections from uk uh, and as mentioned to you, we have a really challenging for the crane. So lifting the pieces and everything was very challenging. And you're surprised to hear they use chain block and derricks for this project, which is commonly not, nobody think about that one for still building. So, so there's a lot of challenge on that. Uh, second thing, we always try to avoid too much welding because welding on site required preheating requirement, everything, which is kind of cause quality of work. So welding, we are tied to, um, tied to what you call minimize on the site. So a lot of detail we work with Dr. Kelkor office uh, and that we found that uh, with Ashish and his team that uh, let's minimize our welding, let's do more bolting. And third thing, shoring, because because as mentioned to you, they, they sometimes they cannot get the big piece of steel, cannot lift in the, in the, by, by the uh, available system. We have put a lot of splices between the beams. So, so that's from structural side. Nicole, by you want to talk about this slide? Sure. So, uh, there were a couple of uh, features in the project where uh, we needed, uh, you know, the structure engineer to, you know, pay really uh, great attention towards detailing. We wanted a connection between two floors, which are executive floors, which needed to be connected physically with a grand stair. Uh, and we thought that the stair needs to also demonstrate the, you know, characteristics or the uh, opportunity that steel provides as a material. So here uh, we wanted a single girder uh, going all the way up and all steps being cantilevered from that. So the design was, uh, you know, envisage keeping uh, that in mind that let's design something interesting that connects between two floors. And uh, I think Nanbai and uh, their team delivered that. Uh, same thing goes for the scissor stair. It was the most challenging uh, aspect of the project where we were trying to do scissor stair in a uh, in Indian context uh, in steel uh, with a lot of uh, fire safing requirement and everything. So that was also the most challenging uh, steel structure, both scissor stair as well as the uh, spiral stair. Over to you, Nainbai or Abhijit. We All right. Uh, well, uh, thanks, thanks, Nikul and Nayan. Uh, that was a great presentation. Gave us a good idea about the structure. Uh, so, uh, just before getting into the question answer session. Uh, I just want to hand it over to Andrea with MX Steel Design. She wants to make a quick announcement. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, requesting all the attendees to please participate in the poll and glance through the latest interactive issue of SSMB magazine, link to which is in the chat box. Also, do write your feedback to edit at the rate of mxbm.it.in. Thank you. Over to you, sir. All right. Thanks, Andrea. All right, so uh, this time, I uh, also want to welcome back uh, Ashish to the discussion. Um, all right, so uh, let's 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 start with a, a couple of a couple of questions that I had in mind, and I've also been reading the questions that are coming in. So I want to start with you, uh, Nicole. Uh, I know, I mean, both you and uh, Nayan mentioned that obviously this is a JSW steel headquarters building, and it's got to be uh, has to be a steel. Uh, but I mean, I, I was just wondering, I mean, at that time, this is 2007, eight time period. So what, what's the backstory here? I mean, did you guys start kind of thinking that maybe it has uh, started thinking about concrete and then it went to steel? So what, what's the story? What's the background here? So uh, thanks, Abhijit. So uh, it's an interesting thing. We, uh, when client came to us, uh, there was one thought going on in everybody's mind that client I mean, it wasn't discussed uh, until uh, the day came, but before that, everybody kind of had this in back of their mind that the client is one of the steel industrialists. And at some point, this discussion will come into a uh, major discussion that what is the material that we want to uh, use for the construction of the building. 
and uh, as an architect as you know we always want to uh, try to do things which are more innovative but as everybody knows india is a challenging market for trying to do to new things uh, specifically when you're talking about using steel structure and availability of the steel uh, availability of the uh, fabricators quality of fabricators at that time uh, availability of uh, fire safing material a uh, skilled workers who can actually do right quality of fire safing so as architects we had already deliberated in our minds that this could come into uh, discussion during our charades and uh, client kind of threw this at us in one of the workshop and said this has to be a steel building and uh, our immediate reaction was that we can do that but uh, it will be very challenging and very difficult to do it in india and uh, okay. i think uh, client's reaction was that why i think uh, we have great strength and we can back it up and we can take any challenges that come but if we don't do it who will do it so that okay. was the vision right there where client said it has to be in steel and we said we'll take whatever challenge it is and we'll take it to the next level all right good good thanks for that so uh speaking of challenges so uh, i want to go to you ashish uh, i mean yeah nayan kind of showed us uh, how the design was and then i mean they uh, you guys kind of took on the you know, design as the local structural engineer okay. later on so uh, what i was wondering is i mean uh, any time a building goes or any structure goes from from the from the drawing sheet so the model when it actually goes into construction so what uh, what design challenges uh, or what construction challenges did you all face uh, during this project as once they started building it yes uh, abhijit as nan rightly said we started this project you know in concept and schematic in 2007 at that right. time steel in india was used for industrial projects more of That's industrial right. projects structures buildings like two storied or three storied were you know constructed commercial building of such a huge area that too with composite structures and even core in this building is in steel uh, was really like you know we started we did everything on a design table but when we actually went into market uh, i'll be very frank we were struggling with the decking uh, profiles deck mm -hmm. profiles so we get startup scope or chorus or you know jsw themselves they have their own uh, sections uh, profiles of decking but uh, we were struggling you know to get which material we should use uh, what should be the profile which which uh, vendor we should use like we we tried you know uh, all over india who can supply those those things uh, we struggled with studs which we will use for yeah. which we want to use for uh, the composite sections you know so all these uh, from there we started challenges started from there and then as um, Mr. Nayan mentioned in his, uh, you know, one of the slide that the capacity of crane was another challenge during construction. Right. Uh, so we had to go from plate girder to the trusses and you know convert those sections so that crane capacity uh, we can lift it with the available crane capacity. Similarly, all the connections which were there on site, we tried to make them bolted connections, high friction grip right. bolts we used and. Um, Uh, almost about three thousand drawings were prepared, fabrication drawings, and our office checked those three thousand. I'm I'm not exaggerating anything. We had bunches of drawings, and uh, uh, this was not done that time on Tekla actually. Now, now you know you have got a lot of sophisticated software like you do uh, beam modeling on Tekla. You get the connections and everything. Contractor finding out contractor was a struggle. to appoint a welder how how where we test it how we are going to test it so we appointed agency to uh, test each and every uh, element you know and the section sizes were i think we used all section sizes uh, whatever you know whichever size is available from ub w pb sections and everything everything so uh, yes it it was like more than experience for us uh, from design table to actual construction uh, every, every point you know uh, site site uh, our engineer used to visit the site we had agency we appointed agency to check the connections uh, whether they are done as per the drawing at site so uh, it, it was it was a great experience to you know construct something 
in that era when we are we were not getting sections beyond mb 600 you know we were strict with right. indian section if you use you will you will get mb 600 so that was one secondly due to the uh, sloping facade each and every connection was becoming different like again uh, mr nayan showed you know the bracing and uh, the things which were there, the flow of bracing was, it was shifting from one point to other point. So we had to, you know, uh, take care at the site when they are uh, constructing it, how to control the levels, how to control the levels of facade. Facade has got peculiar section. If you go back to the section, it has got level differences. So that those were the challenges. And next challenge was how to make it fire protective. You know, yeah. because industrial structure generally we we leave it that way because it's it's fire hazards are different in commercial building and residential building to us fire rating. So we used uh, at exposed for exposed sections intermittent paint. Now intermittent paint to get in India at that time was again a challenge. We we had to go to a lot of vendors get code from them. So these these were the few challenges which which were there at the time of construction in in two thousand eight two thousand nine. All right. Uh, th thanks, Ashish, for that. I guess I'll I'll just uh, pick up where you left off. I mean, we're getting a lot of questions about the uh, fire safing and fireproofing of the structure. So both, uh, I guess, Nayan and Ashish, uh, I guess we you already kind of touched upon that. So with the the exposed structure was intumescent paint. Uh, a lot of our, uh, our our viewers want to know. I mean, what was the material that was used for the columns? Yeah. Uh... I mean, yeah. See, generally, normally what happens is uh, we, you know, in composite structures, we use a steel section encased in concrete. And that's how because concrete is great in compression. So we want to utilize that. But here, as we are, we are from starting, uh, you know, Nikul Bhai and uh, then by everybody is talking about that client wanted everything to be in steel. So uh, we did steel column. And to encase it, we use lightweight block work. We surrounded it with lightweight block work. We encased it in those lightweight block work. So it is very sleek column sizes, which you see at site. It's not a huge concrete column. It's, it's very uh, sleek members. So for con columns, we use lightweight block work with fire rating of two hours and its thickness worked out. For beams, we used a uh, cementitious paint that is uh, vermiculite spray uh, with false ceiling. And whichever sections were exposed, we used uh, again um, intermittent paint with proper microns, which will give it a two hours fire rating. All right, good, good. All right, so I think from that, let's let's switch uh, switch back to uh, an architectural question. So uh, I guess it's actually for for uh, for the entire team. So uh, I think Nikul, from from the, the get go, I think you guys had sustainability was a very important part part of the design, and uh, as it should be. Uh, so and then you touched upon a lot of lot of things from an architectural standpoint that were done from a sustainability standpoint and services as well. So uh, could you uh, kind of expand a little bit more on that? I mean, a lot of our, uh, we're getting a lot of questions about sustainability as well. So from uh, maybe from, uh, was there any other uh, things that were, I mean, local sourcing of local material, I guess that was not very possible for steel, but other materials in the interiors, uh, any other contribution from the structures team on uh, in getting the structures uh, from, from a sustainability standpoint? So uh, just to touch upon the uh, sustainability aspect, there are certain aspects that we have already covered in the uh, presentation, but there are certain things that is just too much to cover, but I can just brief on it. Sure, uh, sure. The glass or the facade that we've used, as I said, there's dual layer system. Now, when you go for transparency, there is a negative that comes with is the heat gain. And uh, in Indian context, heat gain is the heat gain and the glare is the largest Hmm. issue that we tackle with. Now I see some of the questions are yeah. asked for uh, related to glare. So what we have done there, and uh, it is specifically designed to reduce the glare and heat gain. We have actually used uh, ceramic fritting on the outer layer, uh, layer of the glazing. So if you look at the uh, exterior uh, image of the building, you will see this white bands horizontal and they are fading more towards when it gets to vision glass. And again, they fade back to solid. So that is actually the fritting, ceramic fritting that you see, which cuts down almost 40% of your heat gain before even it enters into the cavity. So the there are two types of cavities that you are dealing with now. One is the actual cavity of DGU glass between uh, three layers of glass. So before it hits that cavity, you are cutting down on the heat gain. 
Second, uh, once you go through the cavity, you are bringing the uh, heat gain down because you have performance glass. And by the time the heat reaches to the actual 1.2 meter, uh, the uh, dual layer glazing system ca uh, cavity, you have already reduced the heat gain and the uh, uh, actual uh, glare to almost less than half. So you are getting the best quality of light to the last layer of vision glass which allows you to just have enough and optimum amount of natural light before it comes into interior space. And all of that is done at a point where you are not even affecting your cooling load. It is done within the area which is ventilated. So we have uh, vergolas at the top, which actually uh, kicks in when the heat uh, is trapped and it starts running and the heat is thrown out. So that is one aspect that uh, we could not uh, capture in the presentation, but it is pretty sophisticated system. Now, talking about the materials and sustainability, so granite was uh, sourced within, uh, you know, uh, Maharashtra where it was available within the shortest distance. Most of the material like glass, we could not uh, get it from the closest distance because at that time getting the best performance glass in India was the most difficult part. So even the uh, facade contractor on this job was Parmasalisa out of Italy. Uh, they were importing the glass from uh, different parts because getting this performance glass was actually, this was the first performance glass ever brought into India at this quality and this uh, performance rating at that time. So it, as I said, it was always challenging. Now, which is why we went with uh, USGBC green rating because they understood the sustainability aspect of uh, these materials in the developed uh, environment, developed context, which is different than uh, Indian context at that time. Right. So Nikul, a couple of uh, questions that are kind of related uh, related to what, what you just talked about. So there's a question about, uh, so at what temperature does the exhaust activate? You know, I mean, that you said that when it uses, I mean, that it opens up. So there are two uh, there are two types of exhaust. The atrium has a mechanical exhaust system, uh, which triggers at uh, approximately I think 32 or 33 degree when it hits the uh, surface or the sensors, which are placed closer to the uh, atrium uh, glass at the top, and uh, the cavity is uh, always in the draft effect. So you are sucking the air, which is a cold air from below, which has natural kind of a draft effect. And you have vergolas, which are running based on the temperature that it captures. As you know, the vergola itself, they work as the hot eyes. Most of the industrial buildings, you use vergolas. So they are not mechanized, but they are naturally just on a pivot. So the moment a hot air rises, automatically they start rotating. Yeah. So we have two types of system, a natural draft system on the outer facade and mechanized uh, system in the atrium. All right, thanks. Uh, then a question for you. Uh, so you uh, you mentioned about the, about the cantilever corner, right? The overhang, the big overhang, and you had two or three different design options there. And uh, and I mean, that's, that's absolutely the way to do it. I mean, as we know, there's probably multiple different ways of doing this. In one of the projects we had uh, kind of a big truss at the top and everything else was hanging from the bottom. So I'm sure you had some good options. So my question is, uh, so the option, I guess, I mean, the, as the uh, there was crane limitations and the plate girder could not be achieved. So you went with this trust option. Uh, if there was no crane limitation, would this have been your uh, preferred option? Uh, beyond with the architect given, we given, they concluded the plate girder because I don't want to see any bracing. So, so if there is a crane was not a limit, I'm sure they went to a plate girder, which they went first. The first thing was designed as a plate girder because 40 meter span is again, is not that crazy span you can say. We right. did a in, in, in Vietnam, which is again, same develop, uh, developed country kind of thing, uh, because I was working on, uh, on uh, Vietnam tallest building and this project doing almost same time. And that location, the helipad is cantilever 25 meter. Now, again, both are country uh, kind of thing. Uh, same issue, structural steel was not not the main concrete concrete country. So 25 meter cantilever we did a kind of thing. Uh, uh, so so here, I'm sure if if there's crane not issue, 
I'm sure architect and client chosen the plate gutter. No, no discussion. You know, you know. <laughs> always driven the. So therefore, we are two engineer, right? Nick, 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 uh, so this I, I have to ask you this. Uh, I, so I, I mean, yeah. Me, why, why did you not me. want the? Hey, uh, so, so, sorry to speak over you. Yeah, why did you not want the beautiful structure to be exposed? I mean, this is JSW Steel headquarters. I mean, you should be uh, kind of showcasing all the steel oh. you can, right? Yeah, absolutely. So if you can uh, see the image in your background, I'm, uh, I think we have expressed a lot of bracings in the project as much as we could. I think the issue with the corner spaces were, uh, they were designed to be, uh, you know, managerial executive spaces. What That's we nice. realize is because the facade was sloping and the steel could not slope, the amount of uh, vertical uh, interruptions that comes into that space, True. we were basically losing the efficiency of the corner triangles. And the more it was coming into the space, the more wastage of space, which was going against the aspect of sustainability. Yeah. So yeah. we wanted to reduce that for two reasons. One is uh, opening up the view from the corner, which was the USP of those corners. Yep. And was to reduce the impact on the corner spaces allow it to have that effect of you know bringing natural light from both sides no i think i agree i was i was just kidding so yeah it's always uh, when the structural engineer and architects uh, there's all, always conflict on uh, on these kind of things uh, it's, it's, it, that, that's how it works uh, all right so we talk, talking about space i think there was a, another question for you nicole about uh, with this uh, double skin, I mean, how was the FSI factor uh, managed? So I guess I'm somebody's trying to ask. I mean, did you lose a lot of space uh, doing that? Or so I think. Interested so, in uh, that. interesting thing, this project when it was done. Uh, see, uh, one thing we realize: the Indian authorities always chasing. When you try to do something new, they don't know how to deal with it. I mean, so they want you to prove them that you're not. Uh, you know, uh, flouting any laws. Yeah. So we did multiple presentations that this is actually not a usable space. This is actually just a service areas which are going to be cleaned as and when required. So we could prove them that this is not a habitable space and we are not increasing any floor space that could be utilized later ever because the level was also different. It was not at the floor level. It was uh, about, uh, you know, it was at a beam bottom level kind of a thing. Mm. So you can't just expand the slab and utilize that at later stage. So, I mean, we could yeah. do the representation and we could convince, which we still do in a lot of projects when we try to do something new. Uh, yeah, similar okay. to, let's say, using the frit to cut the glare. Now, there are bylaws in a lot of different uh, regions where you have to have certain solids on the facade. So we have done multiple representations for certain buildings that we do, and we go and present that having a frit and cutting down on the solar heat gain is as good as having a solid surface. As far as there is a low reflection factor on the glass, there is no negative of having glass as far as you're not getting the heat inside. Exactly. So we've done that successfully in multiple projects. All right. Okay, uh, so uh, we've got uh, couple more than a couple of questions uh, related to cost so uh, i'm going to kind of uh, bucket a few of them together so um, i know we uh, kind of talked about uh, the steel tonnage uh, i think the steel consumption was about 10.3 uh, kgs per square feet so uh, i guess the question is uh, if 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 we would have gone with uh, a concrete a concrete design for this building uh, so Ashish and uh, Nayan, I guess uh, we're getting a lot of questions is how much, what percentage of the construction cost we would have raised? So what if, is it like uh, 15, 20% cheaper than the steel structure or uh, so what, I mean, I'm just, just, just your number. I mean, was there some comparative studies done or, or, or a gut feel number? Uh, I'll start and you can give because yeah. to be with you, uh, I'm totally honest with everyone that we want to study at least we want to study a tall concrete option. Uh, and those I mentioned to you this those time and even today, India is still concrete country. So I'm sure concrete is might be cheaper 
uh, it may be more challenging also because same time we did one project uh, which is Westin building now the same spawn 40 meter spawn and we did a kind of PT first time the flat beam 2.5 meter wide by 475 depth so I'm, I'm, my gut feeling says it's definitely concrete will be cheaper maybe easier for construction everything uh, but I think at least I uh, didn't study at least concrete at the option so Ashish you want to take a if you want to pick up the number from the air, what number yes. you pick up? Call <laughs> <All> air number. <laughs> no, actually, it was not a number. To be frank, uh, yes, the comparative was done at that time for some reason, you know, uh, steel versus concrete. That uh, If you would have done this in concrete, what would have been the cost? And uh, so, yes, it was cheaper from the perspective of only, uh, you know, when we talk about superstructure, uh, to be frank. And um, uh, yes, it was 15%, I think, 10 to 15% cheaper than steel structure, um, if I remember it correctly. Uh, but uh, I want to make one point here, uh, make note of it that some of the columns were floating from the first floor. You know? So the load which, which would have come on those uh, transfer girders and things uh, would have changed the depth and size and reinforcement of those transfer girders. Similarly, we have not used cores for as a concrete cores, you know, generally, which is normally used or columns in concrete. So it full structure was steel structure. So yes, uh, RCC structure being India uh, concrete, you know, we are experts in concrete. Uh, now things are changing, but still yeah. uh, till some years back, we were experts in concrete only kind of. So concrete was working out to be cheaper for this building, even though spans were of 11 meters and 13 meters. Uh, right. So that 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 is what I think. Uh, Abhijit, if I may yeah. add, sure. Uh, there were two aspects to this question. One is, uh, as you know, BKC has a height restriction. Mm -hmm. uh, any cantilevers that increases the beam depth reduces the height yep. and potential of losing a floor in the most prominent uh, uh, real estate. Lo losing an inch in BKC is probably costlier than uh, concrete versus steel. So if you relate that, I think uh, steel will be cheaper any day. Considering yeah, yeah. the amount of built up that you got with the steel and the height that we got, more or less 3.2 meters in most of the space is clear. And executive spaces we got up to 3.6, 3.7 meter clear because of the steel structure. I think that is the biggest achievement that you could have in spaces like BKC, where every inch in the height as well as floor space is more expensive than superstructure. Nikul, you, you said it right. I mean, this is uh, the question that we kind of always get from our clients as well. And like it's concrete versus steel. Yeah, I mean, obviously concrete is gonna be cheaper. It could be 15 to 20% cheaper uh, in some instances. But I mean, the savings that you have to look at is not only just the construction cost. I mean, you have reduced, uh, I mean, reduced construction time. I mean, so you can market sooner. So you have gains from that. And obviously the, uh, the area that you're gaining, I mean, the concrete column sizes would be bigger. So you're getting a, a lot, lot more area to sell. And like you said, every inch counts. So definitely. And in the, for this building, I would think, I mean, for that cantilever uh, overhang corner portion, I mean, doing that in concrete, I mean, that would have been something that probably uh, you would have not uh, liked as an architect because you're kind of losing your view, views. So the uh, the thin structure, I mean, the beauty of the steel uh, is it would have been lost. Correct. Right. And uh, it would have killed, killed the entry point because... Uh, Currently, both entry lobbies have one large column. Everything else is just cantilever. So yep. you literally, uh, you know, have nothing other than this one column that the whole structure is hold upon. And imagine steel, uh, instead of steel concrete coming down and losing the transparency at the lobby level is not something desirable. After doing so much of effort to, you know, yeah. get those uh, design drivers into the design, the other challenge I think which I'm sure Nayan Bhai and Ashish will agree to is that currently we see concrete as an option because of a maturity in post-tensioning in the Indian market. Those is challenging. Yeah, yeah. Now it is at least some familiarity with that uh, technology. At that time that was also equally challenging. 
so right. for me i mean if i recollect my experience there it was equally challenging to do pt as a challenging as it was to do steel at that time yeah so reducing the thickness of the structure uh, you either go with steel or pt and the cost yeah. was not too different yeah yeah no you you are absolutely right Second i guess uh, while we are talking about uh, steel and the availability i think uh, uh, i was i was surprised to see i think i mean that the the non availability of the steel sections that were required i understand this was a few years ago uh, but at the same time at, during that time also i think i mean there was a lot of industrial structures that were happening uh, and uh, especially i mean if a building that is the jsw headquarters had issues getting uh, the right kind of ucub sections I mean, forget about anybody else, right? Uh, so, and also, uh, uh, Nayan, you mentioned that I mean, there were some sections. I think it was hollow sections or uh, circular and square tubes that had to be imported from the from UK. Uh, and so, I think I mean, uh, obviously, I mean, uh, it you had to do what had to be done, I guess. Uh, but at certain point, I mean, were uh, uh, some uh, kind of built-up sections considered? I think we spoke a number of options kind of thing, uh, yeah. kind of thing. We want to make sure that we get a quality because some of the uh, uh, the bracing is exposed to the what do you call view is actually exposed. So we want to make sure that is because again when you do the belt up, they have to grind properly. Everything, a lot of things required the quality work required, and welding quality and everything. So we are cautious. This bracing material and this is little system. We don't want to compromise any any quality on that. So they uh, they did on that. So as mentioned, majority portion like you compare with uh, industrial structure. Industrial structure doesn't require that heavy yeah. section like column. Doesn't require that heavy than 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 uh, the building kind of thing. So so the material is available, but not what we look every time. So right. you can say I mean we asked you, you want to pick up the number, but I'll pick up the number. Eighty to ninety percent material was kind of used. Uh, uh, used which uh, available, we can pick up the number. Mm. Um, uh, but but again, and that's the reason. One of the reason uh, somebody mentioned in the uh, I'm reading the I'm answering some of the typing my answer. Uh, but somebody mentioned that if today if we design this building, it's yeah. different. Answer is of course yes because yes. we are right now doing a Loda project. Uh, uh, for example, simple co- example, the column to column connection. Right now we do fair to bit, uh, fair to bear, which is we cannot do in those days. Yeah. Um, have a connection detail form for like uh, uh, beam to beam or column to column is significantly improved. I will say that I'm working in India since 2005. I see big change, not just steel, even concrete. When we came in India with people using M40 concrete, now people use, yeah. we use for M95. So this always happened that the industry if required industry change. It's always kind of, uh, kind of uh, incre- uh, this one. So today I will say India is much better shape on structure still. Uh, we're getting uh, from Japan, we're getting from Korea with reasonable price. A lot of things improve a lot. We are really doing much like train capacity. A lot of things are improved a lot. So we still use, Ashish, if I'm wrong, we use pretty good material, which is their own material. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, we had to import some of the uh, section sizes due to lead time, you know, uh, required. Mm. On site, it was required and, you know, manufacturing, it, the stock was not available. So, JSW managed to import those from, probably from UK, where they, the sections were available at their different plants, maybe, or, you know, or sometimes we use some different uh, uh, sections. But available UB and UC section. So this was the first project where we used UB and UC section. There are very few uh, different, uh, you know, plate um, built up sections were used. There was one interesting uh, thing which you, I would like to add is mm-hmm. I think we saw that staircase, spiral staircase, which is which looks very slick and, you know, with the suspenders, uh, which, which goes for uh, almost like two floors with a suspender at one end with the cantilevering, uh, cantilevering steps. That uh, staircase is made out made out of a box, like one section, one side there is a box, which was made out of a plate cut to the shape and then welded, you know, and uh, to, right. so we had to control at side the quality of that box section when we, we were we were doing those, those butt, butt joints. So we can keep it exposed. So that is a built up section, which you can see if anytime you see that it's an exposed built up box section. And uh, some some sections were made out of plates with butt welding, but 
most of uc and ubs were used uh, up to 900 dep which were in, imported or maybe from the plants of jsw uh, uh, yeah thanks so vijit i, no, uh, I if i may add i sure, think sure. Uh, importing from uh, uk was probably seen as a alternative because at that time i think if i recollect well jsw had taken over severfield uk so they were their uh, sister company and they wanted to kind of uh, you know start integrating severfield into jsw and it was they saw that as an opportunity to kind of better integration of two firms where yeah. they could find those availability in the sections over there yeah no i, I agree with you and i want to kind of uh, just what what you talked about nay and i want to kind of uh, second that and uh, in the past 8 uh, 9 years i mean the construction industry has progressed leaps and bounds and not not only on the materials but the technology i mean the construction technology the contractors are much more sophisticated project management project delivery we're witnessing that all of that all of us are so i think that's uh, that's a real real good encouragement and here i also want to give props to uh, uh, for uh, steel construction summit and uh, mx business media for kind of uh, increasing the awareness of steel and i think i mean institutions like these are required where we talk a little bit more about steel we uh, kind of challenge ourselves we bring uh, whatever i mean the the issues are the challenges are to the forefront and get get those resolved so i think the entire community the aec community coming together has helped in uh, Uh, kind of improving, uh, improving construction and construction technology in India. All right. So uh, next, next question. Uh, few of uh, few of our uh, viewers want to know about uh, what vibration criteria was used because I think it's a steel uh, structure. And then uh, in in one of the schemes you had interior columns which we removed. We went to kind of longer spans. So uh, what what vibration criteria was used? Was there any challenges with that? Uh, and if you no, jump in I, I, i will say this was not challenge because for two reason uh, first of all let i respond already in, in my in writing i already answer that we use aic guide uh, 11 which is guide 11 yeah usa we use overseas project also so so we use that criteria and and usually the slab on deck help us a lot um here uh, there's one plus point ub section we didn't is usually be higher we got usually higher higher than w section so depth uh, reduce the deflection so overall we didn't face problem about and and for still building around 12 meter to 40 meter is not a bad span we do up to yeah. 18 meter span sure. easily without issue of vibration we did vaulted center was almost 20 uh, 19 meter converting feet into that 18.5 to 90 meter so answer to no we didn't face too much problem on the vibration of the things uh, company but of course this is still building so vibration is different than concrete people always ask me nan is same as concrete building answer is no because steel has a own own pros and cons and concrete has a pros and cons and people have to change people have to accept and people start using uh, like when you design high rise building acceleration the building people have to use it people used to once you start using the space you become used to the space yep. so answer to no no i don't think we have a big issue about vibration for this project ashish you want to add something yeah i mean uh, it's uh, standard you know vibrations which we restricted Okay. The standard says that it should be more than four hertz, but it was like we we went up to you know six hertz. We we had no problem with those hertz, six yeah. hertz and all. Hertz for that, and uh, yeah. and I think uh, we with office uh, walking and jumping kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. jumping right, kind yeah. of thing. It, it goes it to the right, yeah, yeah. design guide eleven. Uh, yeah, yeah. Eleven. To just add to it, you know, we were worried about the vibrations of again. I'll come back to that spiral staircase. Whether it will yeah. show give some vibration when somebody is walking, you know, because. Because that that had we had checked it theoretically we had concluded that there won't be any problem for vibration so we made you know some our our engineer to go to site walk on it four people at a time or so so that you know we can check the vibrations actually whether compare it with the theoretical thing but as uh, Nan said uh, vibration was not a problem as we had uh, taken care while designing it uh, that was one of the criteria and that is one of the criteria when you design a steel structure I suppose yeah. Yes, apart from deflection and stresses yeah i'd like to add something to that i think both of you may not be aware of uh, some of the challenges we faced uh, during the design which we generally do when we do interiors 
so we also did interiors for executive floors and i was literally stationed there to kind of design and close the project one of the challenge that we faced when the client said we want to use uh, satwario marble now everybody knows satwari is a soft material mm -hmm. and uh, when you have vibrations and if you put satwari in a larger span without expansion mm -hmm. joints it's going to start cracking so we strategically place satwario and other materials in a manner where uh, you decrease the amount of surface into parts and then it's a combination of carpet floor versus marble floor depending on which kind of space you are in so that uh, you you decrease the amount of surface area and it, you do not uh, create a situation where you would have those kind of cracks in the marble the other challenge was the when you start putting wet kind of flooring on a steel structure uh, flooring agency needs to understand that this is a lightweight structure you can't uh, put uh, 75 mm of uh, uh, you know uh, the mortar underneath your marble so we literally had to do we had to have a lightweight concrete of almost 50 mm before the actual wet application happened underneath the marble which was also a special application because uh, marble uh, white marble catches on the sand so we had uh, almost half an inch of uh, godra sand which is specifically used for uh, karara or satwario marble so that it does not get any stain from the material below and underneath we had 50 mm of lightweight uh, concrete by lafarge which uh, made sure that you're not adding extra weight than anticipated in the structure one more point i would like to make about that spiral stair is uh, the way it was designed it was dramatic that when we were doing interiors we had to make sure that when we are cladding with the materials where when we are creating the steps of that it does not lose the character of it so mm -hmm. the material we used to clad it is korean directly on steel where the complete korean was formed on the steel in the same shape as the uh, steel actual steel shape and then uh, the uh, support underneath the steps which were part of the stair we had a glass laminated steps on top of each of these which were captured at the edge with a spider connection so my all my point was that uh, for such buildings interior designers have to be uh, best at what they do to be able to make sure that they are doing justice to these kind of designs and it's not just that you can just do anything with these kind of building you have to respect the characteristics of sticks of the building the material the finishes that you put in there is also the aspect of vibrations acoustics that you have to make sure that each space is get when you work with these kind of uh, you know high sensitive uh, buildings and areas and at so, the same so time uh, respect the a uh, kind of limitations of the design loads that the structural engineers as exactly. well cannot yeah yeah, yeah. All right, so guys, we have uh, like uh, we're coming to the almost to the close. We have almost three minutes remaining. Uh, but uh, quick, quick question: I've gotten a lot of questions about the diaphragm design, uh, especially um, Nayan. You you kind of showed where the the brace locations and there's a big atrium in the middle, and you didn't have any opportunity to stitch it up. So uh, the diaphragm loads had to kind of transfer on the sides, and you had the two braces. So I mean, uh, somebody was wondering whether we had any. horizontal uh, did you had any horizontal bracing or any additional reinforcement that had to go in the slabs to kind of uh, diaphragm i uh, just uh, just a one minute quick answer the answer is no uh, because as mentioned we are slab on deck so concrete itself acting the diaphragm and transferring the force to the end so answer is no because you one minute i can go detail but answer yeah. is no because concrete okay. help us for the diaphragm All right, so you didn't need any additional drag strips. No, and anything. we put a bracing such a way. If you want to use PPA, it's more of an extension. Yeah. We put a bracing such a way that it can be act as individual, individual also. But we want to make sure the building act as a as a combined. But yeah. we put a bracing strategically that each one has a both direction bracing on both direction, each wing. Yeah, uh, and then uh, about the project completion time, we've got a few questions on how much time did it take to. So uh, I, I responded that one. I responded that is a long time. 
It's a lot. This kind of building, structures still building. It took a long, much longer than I thought. We took a more than, sorry to say, more than the concrete building too. But somebody put and I respond that is a long time. I will, for my reference, for working on steel before years and years, this building took forever for building. And that's one of the reasons I say no to the work beginning because industry was not. Today is different story. Yeah. Somebody asked question. Today we have definitely much faster than this one. But if you give reference, it took a long, long time. Yeah, I'll right. add a so, few liners to that, Abhiji, to close it. Yeah. Uh, I would uh, say three aspects that, uh, you know, results that uh, delay. One, I think it's the uh, developing market, uh, uh, skill labor availability for fabrication. Availability of the steel sections, and uh, you know every when you try to do something uh, out of the box in India, there are very limited vendors available, and you yeah, have yeah, to yeah. live with their skill levels available. So this was the first project after I returned back from US, and uh, the most challenging part that I found was very limited availability of uh, vendors to work at this excellence that you expect and uh, very few examples for them to show you what they have done to get you some feeling or comfort that they will be able to do this. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll leave with this thought. I think, I mean, uh, somebody had to do it. Somebody had to do the first project. Uh, so for all of us to be in a position where we are right now in, uh, in from a sense of uh, the acceptability of steel design and steel structures in India, uh, so uh, I guess I, uh, uh, so we should all say thank, thank uh, JSW for kind of choosing to showcase their product and uh, make steel a little bit more common in India. I think with that, uh, thank you all. Thank you, Nikul, Ashish and uh, Nayan. Uh, and uh, this was a good, good discussion. And uh, I'm going to hand it over to, uh, I see Carol and Navneet. I think let's see what we have coming, coming up next week. Thank you. I firstly thank all the speakers and the moderator. Thank you so much for being this session an interesting one. Uh, upcoming webinar next week on the 17th of July is a new integrated terminal building at Guwahati. Uh, an expression taken from human urge to fly. Uh, wherein, wherein Steel has played a major heroic role. So definitely do join us for the next